Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. Now this is going to be one of a few videos I'm going to do looking at each of the three main medical school entrance exams that are used in the UK. I'll spend a video looking at each one, looking at its core components, everything you need to know basically about studying, getting on with it and getting a good score if possible. And while this series isn't actually going to look at how to do well on any of the three main exams, it's more about the timelines involved, how the scoring works, and everything you need to know to actually use these tests to make your application to medical school. So let's jump right into this one, the first of these three videos in this little series, the UK CAT. Now, if you've ever entertained the idea of going to medical school in the UK and studying to become a doctor, chances are you've come across the UK CAT, the United Kingdom Clinical Aptitude Test. Now this is the standard medical school entrance exam that virtually everybody can and will take. And as with all of the entrance exams, the point of the UK CAT is to allow medical schools another metric by which they can judge their candidates and decide who they might like to give a place to on their medical program. As of 2018, the UK CAT is a two-hour computer-based assessment that has to be taken at specific test centres, which we'll talk about later, and currently consists of four sections. And these four sections are verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, decision-making, and abstract reasoning. Each section is marked from 300 points to 900 points at the maximum, and all of them are of the format multiple choice, choose the single best answer. And each of these four subsections, as you might guess from the names, they all test different types of skills. One thing that's really key to note with the UK CAT is that it's not an academic test at all, really. If I had to place the difficulty of the quantitative reasoning section, for example, I would say it was maybe A grade GCSE maths, something like that. It's not horrendously complicated. But you don't need to have any specialist subject knowledge at all. It's about applying the skills that you have. Beyond those four main sections, the UK CAT has an additional subtest called the Situational Judgment Test. And as you might have guessed from the name, the Situational Judgment Test assesses your ability to make situational judgments. The reason I talk about this one last is that it carries very little weighting relative to the other sections. So each of these five sections that we've talked about lasts a different amount of time and has a different number of questions. So the time pressures for each section can vary slightly depending on exactly what it is you're being asked to do. So after you sit the exam, all of your scores from each subsection are collated together to give a total score out of 3,600. So the maximum, as I said, is 900 per section. And you're also given a band score for the SJT from 1 to 4, 1 being the top, 4 being the bottom, and this is calculated by looking at how closely your answers match the answers given by an expert set of clinicians. And according to the UK CAT consortium themselves, most people on average will score from 500 to 700 in each section in each year that the UK CAT is taken. And it's worth pointing out right now that there is no negative marking on the UK CAT whatsoever. So guess if you don't know the answer whenever you can. So now, do you need to take the UK CAT? As of 2017, 26 out of the 33 medical schools in the UK use the UK CAT as their entrance exam for undergraduate entry, that is, if you're applying straight after your A-levels. In terms of the timeframes that are involved, actually booking the UK CAT, that opens in early May, and then the test itself has to be sat between early July and early October. This year it was the 2nd of July and the 2nd of October. It will vary by year so make sure to check the website. And the other really key thing to note is you have to take the UK CAT the year before you actually want to start at medical school. Everything is done a year in advance, just like a standard university application. So let's just put that into some sort of easy context so you can understand. If you're currently doing your A-levels, you've finished year 12, you've done your AS exams or mock exams or whatever, you then, during that summer, after your year 12, you need to take the UK CAT, work on your personal statement, work on your med school application. The UCAS deadline is the 15th of October or thereabouts. So once the 15th of October comes around, application goes off. Your interviews could be any time between then and say February, March time. And then all going well, you would start medical school that September. After you finish your year 13, you would have the summer holiday and then you would start. Just to talk very briefly about some of the costs involved for the admin fees, 
If you take the UK CAT test within the EU, between the test opening in July and the end of August, you will be charged £65 to cover the cost of the test. As I said before, testing actually closes at the start of October, but if you take it between the end of August and the beginning of October, the cost goes up to £87, and this merely reflects increased demand towards the end of the testing period. But don't worry, the test itself does stay the same all the way through the testing period. Everyone takes the same exam in a given year, and you can only take the UK CAT once per year. If you want to retake, you'll have to do it the next summer. And if you need to take the UK CAT in a situation outside the EU, the current administration fee is £115. Something else we should talk about is that if you are in a situation where you're entitled to things like extra time on exams, or have a condition like dyslexia or ADD, you can actually choose to sit a variant of the UK CAT, such as the UK CAT SEN or the UK CAT SA. And there's no difference with the actual test, there just might be extra rest breaks or extra time allowed to answer some of the questions. Now something really extremely important to note if you're going to take one of these special arrangement tests is that the evidence as such for your condition is not looked at by the UK CAT consortium themselves. It's actually looked at by the universities that you apply to. So if you're going to go this way, I recommend checking that all your evidence and medical documentation is up to date and logistically as watertight as it can be, because if you go that route, it'll be too late to fix it if the evidence doesn't work out. Again, what I would recommend doing is going to the UK CAT website and looking under the extra time section, and that will explain this to you in more detail. So at this point in the video, I'm sure you're probably thinking, so do I actually need to sit the UK CAT? And the answer is almost certainly yes. At least based on my own experience, and I think many people would back me up on this, it's the easiest of the three medical school entrance exams and it also statistically gives you the most wiggle room. And this is because, best of all, you actually get your results as soon as you finish the test, just like you would if you were doing your driving theory exam, for example. And the reason I use this example is that in the UK, you actually have to go and sit the UK CAT at Pearson test centres, which are the centres you'll have been to if you've done your driving tests. Be sure to work out where your nearest one is, because that's where you'll be going on the day. So how do you actually use the score you get to apply? I explained earlier the structure of the scores you'll receive. You'll get a score for each section, you'll get your total score out of 3,600, and you'll get your SJT band from 1 to 4. Now once you've received this score, what you should be doing is looking at the schools you think you might want to apply for, and looking for their UK CAT cutoffs. And usually specific numbers are very, very hard to find, but what a university might say is that we only consider candidates who are in the top 30% of UK CAT test takers in their cohort, for example. And it's really, really key that you go and check this for yourself because this may vary year to year and it varies enormously between universities. So go to their website and look. Now, one of the easiest places to find this information is the how the UK CAT is used by consortium universities document. And you can also look at the entry requirements for UK medical schools document, which is provided by the Medical Schools Council. And I've linked both of these documents in the description of this video, so be sure to go and have a look at them too. So just to give an illustration of how medical schools might work something like this, we look at Warwick Medical School, where I am. And do note this is a graduate only program, but it just provides a nice illustrative example. What they do is they look at everyone's results that applies to them, they look at all their UK CAT scores, they then look at the cohort mean, so the average score, and then they get rid of everyone below that, and then everyone who is left gets allocated points for their total score, and then they combine that score with the interview stage and that's how they decide who's going to be given places on the course. So again, this will vary, but that's just an example of what a medical school might choose to do. Okay, we're coming to the end of the video, but this is, I think, the most important bit of advice when it comes to applying to universities after having taken the UK CAT. I mentioned wiggle room before. What I meant by wiggle room is that because you get your score immediately when you take the UK CAT, it doesn't obviously go to the universities that you want to apply to immediately. It doesn't go until the UCAS deadline. 
has come and gone. So what that actually means is if you take the UK cat early on in the testing cycle, say you could take it mid-July or something, if it doesn't go super well and you don't get the scores you want to get into the schools you want, that actually gives you enough time to take the BMAT and maybe even the GAMSAT if you really work hard. I'll be doing videos on both of those other exams in due course, but it's really something to think about. It basically just allows you to spread your bets a little bit. In my case, I signed on to take both the UK CAT and the BMAT. Um, my UK CAT actually went pretty well, so I decided to use that to apply for more programs than the BMAT. Because that's obviously the case too, if your UK cat goes really really well and it'll be enough to get you wherever you want to go, you don't need to take the BMAT or the GAMSAT or any of the other exams. And as I say, I think it's usually early November that your UK cat test scores actually are delivered to the universities you've applied to. So from there, it goes off alongside your personal statement, your UCAS application, your reference, and then hopefully you're on to interview and usually it's some combination of your UK CAT score and your interview that will help the medical school make their decision to give you a place on the course. And from there, you can put it behind you and hopefully never have to think about it ever again. So I hope that's been helpful, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. I just wanted to do a few of these videos just to give a quick walk through each of the entrance exams. We've looked at the UK CAT today. I've actually done videos on each of the subsections of the UK CAT which are full of hints and strategies to help you maximise your score for each one and I've linked those down in the description as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos just like this and go ahead and check out my website postgradmedic.com which also features my daily blog of med school life here in the UK. Thanks very much guys, take care and I'll see you soon.